In this video I'm going to talk about the Repetier uh, host software slicer and your initial configuration and getting your first print. To start off with, the bed seems to be level. I mean, how would you know? You can adjust these a little bit. You can loosen up the screws. You can twist this. My build platform is mounted different than anyone else. I have an aluminum piece of aluminum with uh, two pieces of double sticky tape. There's a little heater that's stuck to the bottom, a sticky circular heater that's stuck to the bottom. I did that because porcelain looking glass is expensive. I didn't want to cut it. I didn't know if it'd be the right size. This aluminum works real good. I don't know how your build platform will be hooked on. You might be able to adjust it. And then up top, we've got three limit switches. It's critical that these limit switches are level, so to speak, because if they're not, your hot end is going to come down and it's going to be printing and digging in. So you have to get these three as even as possible. So what I would do is I've got a millimeter tape measure here and you go from there and you eyeball it and you try to get all of these switches to be within, I'd say within half a millimeter of each other. And if you do that, it's going to make your life easier. Um, after you get everything done and you think it's really not level, like I said, you can adjust this a little bit. You can also adjust these. Let's say when it's printing, it's, it's, um, it's good here, but it's, it's coming up off the print back here. If it's just coming off, you know, half a millimeter, it's not, not as level as you want. Well, you can bring this limit switch down half a millimeter. It'll come up in zero, and then when you print, it'll be flat. One of the first questions you're going to have to answer is what type of firmware are you going to put on your board, and what kind of software are you going to use on your PC to control your printer? For this video, I'm just going to go over Repetier. Repetier, I don't know how to say that. It's the one I like the most. And so you go to download, and you've got the host software to run on your machine for whatever operating system you have. And then you can download the firmware. Let's go ahead and look at the host software. This is what will run on the PC. And I've already got it set up. So we'll start off easy and set up this host software. Um, a few easy things like the serial port that your Arduino is plugged into, baud rate, um, maximum things. Um, you can copy these settings if you want. Park position, this is where the, the head goes after it's done printing. If by default, this software is probably going to be set up to for a uh, Mendel or something, and these XYZs will be completely wrong for your machine. Printer shape. You can see that it's not a classic uh, XYZ printer. It's a circular. And then um, printable radius, depending on how big your printer is, and then printable height. All right, let's see how we figure out printable height. So, a rough way to, to, to find printable height is to get everything up to the limit switches. We look on here and it looks like it's about 223 millimeters. This number is just a limit in the software. So if you are manually jogging, the software says, hey, you probably don't want to go that far so this is a limit in the software but there's a limit in the firmware that we'll have to set as well alright I think I better show you how this software is used so you can really understand what we're doing here so you can make a STL file or download it on places like Thingiverse you just drag it in here this just shows you the position you can scale it if you want what you're going to have to do then is slice it. So 
when you slice it, it it cuts it into little layers that uh, the printer can print. I've already have my slicer all set up, but I'm going to show you what happens here. You slice it, and then you can see the G code. This is what is sent to the machine, and what you want to do is kind of look at the G code and make sure that the thing looks all right because it might not slice it properly but it has done pretty well and then of course whenever you're ready to go you can manually heat the thing up and run the job um, slicer so how would you know what settings to put in the slicer I really don't know um, I fiddled with it for hundreds of hours so let's look at slicer okay let's start with the printer settings um, you put in roughly what the size of your bed is where the center of your bed is um, how many extruders you have I'm just gonna quickly go through a lot of these settings here uh, extruder one so I only have one extruder and this is about the diameter that's really working for me now when I get my calipers out and measure a piece of the string it's actually bigger but at this diameter whenever it's printing it doesn't seem to be too much or too little plastic um, you could start off with whatever your nozzle is supposedly rated for I think mine is uh, supposed to be 0.4 um, retraction or if you're moving from one piece all the way over to another you might want to retract and it pulls some of the plastic back so you aren't stringing all over the place with the Delta printer I like to lift it up a little bit when I'm moving over stuff because the Delta if it drags over a piece of plastic or something that's a little messed up it can get off and completely screw up your print so lifting I like that um, so we're going to retract the filament and then after we move we'll push two millimeters real fast and then continue printing so you can save these settings you shouldn't have to change this printer settings uh, for this printer so I have it saved as costle now filament you probably what you're gonna find is that uh, different colors of filament different types different manufacturers they're gonna act a little differently so notice I have a lot of settings there's some black ABS some purple PLA some red ABS blah 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 this is the diameter of the actual filament if you're having issues kind of as a last resort um, if there's too much or too little plastic being pushed out you can try that so I'm printing in ABS so ABS has a lot hotter needs higher temperatures so the first layer it's going to be 210 and my heated bed is going to be 90 C and then I just keep it but you can change it you know after the initial layer I have automatic cooling so the software will tell the machine to turn on the bed cooling if the layers are, are really small so these are settings for the fan fan speed print settings alright so these settings could be changed notice that I have it for the different types of plastic ABS and PLA there's your first layer height um, so each layer is going to be 0.45 millimeters notice that if you put 0.45 in here and then you say point you know point five zero make this bigger than the physical size of your printer over here it it will blow its mind it will know won't know what's going on the first layer you could have it to be smaller but um, be careful with this because if it makes the first layer height smaller it will actually use less plastic so this is not a good crutch for you know the print head um, this number right here you have to get this tuned your your 
height so that that first layer is perfect on the uh, on the surface there. So how many parameters? What kind of infill do you want to do? Speed is a huge, huge issue here. So the very first layer, you're going to slow everything down by 35%. And these tooltips are actually very helpful. It says blah, blah, blah. It will scale the default speeds. So this is a default speed for perimeters, default speed for infill, blah, blah, blah. And these are all millimeters per second. When you're printing your first layer, you're going to slow down 35% of these numbers. And um, you can, obviously, you're going to have to fine tune your machine. Slower is better for, for starting out. That way that first layer sticks really well. And after that, you can speed everything up. So when it's not printing, it can move pretty fast. All right, so let's look at parameters. This one is in millimeters per second. Small perimeters is 70% of this main number. External perimeters is 90% of this number. You could just do everything in millimeters per second. I don't know why we're given the choice to confuse ourselves. Infill, 40 millimeters per second. If it's solid infill, it's going to be 40. Top solid infill is going to be 90% of 40. So, and the rest of these settings you shouldn't really have to mess with. If you want support material, you can add that. If you have multiple extruders, so forth. Okay. So once you get those settings, you go ahead and slice it, slice it again. It generates the G code based on all those settings. And then we can go over here and we can print. What one thing I kind of like to do is manually start these up. You don't have to. It's it's smart enough that it can do it. Notice that my print bed is um, slowly heating up. My extruder is heating up pretty quick. So I hit print job without you. Um, it takes a few minutes for my heated bed to get up to temperature. So what it does is it waits for the, the print bed to reach temperature. I think it will home and then it will go down 10 uh, millimeters from the bed it'll wait for the extruder to reach uh, temperature and then it'll start printing make the bed even hotter so okay 89 it finally went homing now the extruder is going to start warming up so it uh, gives you an ETA how long it thinks it, it's going to take to print so it uh, gives you an ETA how long it thinks it, it's going to take to print. First thing it does is it gets some, uh, gets the, it makes a little pass to get some plastic out. So notice how this first layer is pretty slow. You you want it to kind of be squished down pretty good. You don't want it to just lay it on. You want to kind of squish it down onto the bed. Now it's doing infill, it looks like. Now my next layer can be quite a bit faster. Once it's done, it's going to park. On this screen, it's kind of handy. You can see it shows what the plastic that's hot. Since this object is so small, the, the whole thing looks pretty, pretty hot. 
That's why the fan is on. It's trying to cool it down for the next layer. How are you supposed to know all of the default settings, especially with things like Slicer? I don't know. No one really usually gives you default settings. Um, as a general rule, try to start slower and then slowly um, print faster and faster and see what your hot end is capable of keeping up with because that's the main limit. It can only heat the plastic so fast so if you start going faster you'll start seeing some slipping or you know spinning out in, in the uh, filament where it's trying to push it but it just can't push it that fast. I'm going to put all these settings on my blog post if uh, you want to reference. Go check that out. It's going to be in the video description. Be prepared to spend, you know, a week or two <laughs> playing with this, you know, uh, trying to get it so that your prints are fairly consistent. You'll also find that different shapes of objects, larger, smaller, strange shapes will print differently and you'll be tweaking these settings perpetually forever. Notice I'm using blue painters tape. It's one of the best surfaces you can have and this print is stuck really good. That's what you want. You don't want it to move while it's printing. Uh, since I have a heated bed um, it's pretty nice once it cools down the print will actually almost just fall off. You know, this, this bed is hot but if you just uh, try not to touch it very much and let's get this thing off. So for your first print you're going to want to search for RepRap calibration objects and one of the ones I've used a lot is the 20 by 20 cube. You're going to want to check how well your machine is working here. So it's 10 millimeters high and then 20 on each side. That's pretty darn good. You can see that I eventually got it calibrated down pretty good. Now um, I printed some pretty horrible. Notice how this is scaled wrong. This was actually on one of my other printers and in the firmware I didn't have it adjusted right. It's really important that you get this figured out so that it's using the right amount of material and printing it the right size. You can see there's a thin wall that you can use trying to figure out what's going on. 